Hi, I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of this newsletter is going to be when your mind goes totally blank. Well, if you've ever been out on a date with a girl or you're talking to a girl in person that you met and you really like this girl, and you're thinking, focusing so much on what you're going to say next, what you're going to ask her next, and all of a sudden, <laughs> your mind fucking goes completely blank. She finishes saying that what she was saying, and then the two of you are kind of standing there looking at each other with these dumb looks on your faces like she's looking at you waiting for you to say something or to say something next because she's kind of at the same same moment and then you're both going uh, there's that awkward silence there that everybody's always worried about preventing got an email here from a viewer he said you mentioned in your book that you used to be up in your head and nervous when you were on dates with girls when you were younger and your mind would go blank. He says, although my conversation skills have improved drastically with girls these past few years, I believe this is still my biggest problem I have. I have no problem making girls laugh and being playful, but girls say I seem quiet and mysterious. Well, there's nothing wrong with mysterious because mysterious is good because when a woman thinks you're mysterious, it gives her a reason to be curious about you. I mean, in other words, they can't figure you out. And that's a good thing. It's a good, positive thing because women are more attracted to men whose feelings are unclear. And that's what the beauty of the things that I teach is. Like, even if though if you're a shy guy, if you're the type of person that knows how to ask questions, that, I mean, by simply asking questions of the other person, just the kind of stuff you'd want to know. I mean, if you're out on a date with a girl and you really like her, you're fascinated by her, you're going to want to know, I mean, I would think if you're really into this girl, pretty much anything that she talks about is going to be fascinating to you. Why? Because it's her life. It's things that she's into and things that she's fascinated by and being fascinated by the way her mind works or the way she thinks or her hobbies or her interests or the kind of crazy things that she does for fun or the craziest things she ever did in her life or the funnest place or the most outrageous place where she ever had sex in public or something like that. I mean, just... The idea is that if you're fascinated by a girl and you really like her, it's pretty easy to ask her questions and want to know more about her just because she's fascinated. And so the more she talks about herself and the more she tells you things about herself, if you've really got a great girl that's a good match for you, you're just going to be fascinated. You're going to think it's intriguing as hell. You're going to be just in your mind, you're going to be like, God, this girl's so fascinating. I just can't believe I stumbled on onto such an intriguing interesting woman at least a woman that's i mean what if I'll give you an example like say you're you're really in the environment you meet a girl and she happens to be like a park ranger so her thing is like trees and she's really into trees and the forest and the things in the forest and stuff like that and you're a big nature person and you just run into this girl and she's really attractive but as you start talking to her and she starts telling you what she does and how she has a passion for it. She loves it. And she starts talking about some of the same things that you like to do. Maybe some of the things that you're into. She maybe talks about some of the same books that she's read that you've also read. It's like when those things start happening and those that connection's happening and that magic is going off, that's, ex that's an exciting time. It's easy to get excited about the other person that you're with and want to know more because it's like as, as you learn more about them, you get more intrigued yourself. But a lot of times when you go out with a girl because you look at her and you think, oh, wow, she's really hot. She's got a great ass. I want to go out with that girl. I'm going to hit that. And then you go on a date and you start talking to her because you never really took time to kind of check her out and get to know with her, get to know her or converse with her for a few months when you first met her. Then you go out on a date with her and you realize the girl's boring or she starts talking about her life and she's into things that you just have fucking zero interest in. And even though she might be drop dead gorgeous, there's just no connection there. And in that case, when you're sitting there talking to her, I, I had that experience recently. I was on a, a date with a girl a few months ago. And as I started to get to know this girl, I just realized that it's like the more she talked and the more she told me, the more I got turned off and the less interested I became. And it was just weird. I was like, this girl was so fucking hot. And as I sit there and I'm talking to her and I'm listening to her, I'm just inside. I'm just going, uh. And then it became harder and harder for me to come up with questions and things that I wanted to know about her because I was losing interest in her. And so that's something that you got you got to look at because I had a video earlier that, that I did today that I was talking about that's kind of the same thing. 
that when you're when you're standing there talking to a girl, if you if you especially if you've known her for a while, or you've been on a date a couple times, and you run out of things to say or ask her because you're just not that into her. There's not really much there other than a physical attraction. You got to look at those things. Sometimes you gotta you gotta you you gotta blow off a girl that's really hot. And if it's something that it's a new experience for you, it's gonna be feel a little awkward and a little weird. But the biggest thing that I would say that really helped me to back back to answer your questions about when you become fearful is I say this all the time, repetition's the mother of skill. The more times you go out on dates, the better you get conversations, the better you get at the process of seduction. The more the things that I talk about and teach, the more they get to the point where you really don't have to think about it and you just kind of see these things day in and day out in your relationship. You can go to a mall, you can be sitting, eating dinner with your, your buddies and you can just kind of walk, look around the dining room and observe the other couples at the tables and you can just look at a couple and instantly know the dynamic of that relationship, whether it's good relationship, whether it's healthy, whether or not the two people still like each other, or if they're just merely tolerating, tolerating one another, or they're really crazy about each other. You see all these things, and so the stuff I talk about in my book, and my articles, and my videos, you start to see it more and more in your own life, the more you interact with other people in these ways, that builds your confidence. It gets easier and easier and easier. And especially like the more beautiful a girl is, and like when you've never been on dates with women that just fucking knocks your socks off, when it first happens, it's really hard. And you may screw up the first couple of dates with, with women that you go out with that you're just crazy about until you realize that at the end of the day, it's not really a big day. Like the other a couple of weeks ago, I was talking with a client of mine. This guy is almost 30 years old, and he just lost his virginity for the first time. And I've been coaching him for... I guess better part of this year. And it was a big deal. I mean, it took like two months to get him to the place where he was really ready to drop the hammer with this girl that he was interacting with. And I was like, I remember saying to him, like even before I said, once you've done it, it'll be like, great. And you'll be, you'll be glad that the pressure's off of you, but it really won't be that big of a deal. And I remember we were talking, it's like the week after, because he stayed inside and they just pretty much had sex the whole, whole week. Prior to that, he was saying, yeah, you were totally right, dude. After a while, it was it really wasn't. It was cool. It was awesome. It was amazing. It was fantastic. But it really wasn't that big a deal because our fear of something is always bigger than actually doing what we fear. And so the thing that you got, you got to remember is that you always want to be asking questions. The person that's in charge of whoever is asking the questions, I should say, that's the person that's leading and who is in charge of of a conversation but if you're ever standing there and you're talking and, and one of those awkward moments happens where you both are like staring at each other and your mind is totally blank and then your girl's looking at you and she's not saying anything you can just get a shitty grin on your face and look at her and just say did your mind just like go totally blank like mine has right now and she'll smile and giggle and laugh because it's like you're both laughing at the same thing which is the fact is that there's an awkward silence but you could just just by saying it that way, it's like you're saying what's kind of obvious because she's looking at you like, what do I do? And you're kind of looking at her like, uh, like you almost can't even remember what your name is in that particular moment. And then you just blurt out something like that where you just say, you know what? I was going to say something to you and my fucking train of thought just, it just went off there all in left field. So what the hell were we talking about again? You just say something like that and then she'll smile and, and giggle because you've just kind of diffused the situation because she was feeling a little awkward too. Now if the girl really likes you, she'll help you get through it. If she's not really that into you, she's not really going to care and she's not going to make much of an effort. But that's the important thing to notice when you're on dates. You know, especially if you're just applying this stuff for the first time is like when you go out with girls that you really like got to pay attention is she making the effort as well is she making the effort is she asking you personal questions about you does she want to know about what you're all about it's important to notice those things because if she's not reciprocating then you got to be objective about the fact am i with am i on a date with a girl who i'm really into and who she just either got low to no interest at all or it's just much lower than mine and i need to chill out relax and back up a little bit and stop acting a little too over eager until she catches up with her actions being reflective of kind of the way that I feel towards her. And sometimes 
you got to do those things. And, and a lot of times guys bullshit themselves. They think, hey, she's on a date with me. What's the big deal? It's not a big deal. Ah. And then you just go right, right through with it. And then two or three days later, they call her and she doesn't call them back. And they wonder why. It's in those moments when you think, oh, it's not a big deal. I can get away with it that you're potentially creating unnecessary problems and drama in your relationship. So if you have a question and you want to ask me, go to my website, click the Contact Me tab, which will be on the left-hand side of your screen, and send me one to two paragraphs max, and just give me several days to get back to you with a response. If you want to talk to me right away, the quickest way to get my help is to book a paid phone coaching session. You can do that by going to my website, click the Products tab, which will be at the top of your screen, and just follow the instructions. If you want to get a digital version of my Kindle ebook on my website, underneath the email sign-up box is a box that has a link that will take you right to the Amazon Kindle download page for my book. Once you get there, if you don't have a Kindle device already, you can download one of their free e-reader apps for your smartphone, tablet device, or your computer. It only takes a matter of seconds to download and sell the app and complete the purchase of my book. And I will talk to you soon.